So backing up your Windows Server is extremely important. We're gonna be showing you a Synology NAS. This is a Synology NAS that I've got. Absolutely love a Synology NAS. If you don't have one, go pick yourself up one of those. But we're gonna show you some software that you can get completely for free on your Synology NAS to essentially manage all of the backups for your Windows servers, whether they are physical servers, whether they are virtual servers, backing up the whole lot. You're gonna need two things, a Windows server, and of course, a Synology NAS, making sure that they're both available on the network. And a third thing, you're gonna need an internet connection as well to be able to download some software directly onto your Synology NAS. Hey, doing, my name is Emilio. I have a tech channel right here. Check it out by clicking on the subscription button on the bell. I release videos every week, so do that so that you don't miss out on anything. Now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna download some software onto our Synology NAS. We're shortly gonna log in to our Synology NAS. It's all configured, ready to go, and we're gonna point it essentially to a Windows server. We'll also get some software installed onto our Windows server to establish the connection between the two. You can schedule when you wanna back it up, how often you wanna back it up, do you wanna back up everything, only bits and pieces, and you can set up a full strategy around your backups for Windows Server, it's brilliant. And we're actually going to be pointing our backups to back up onto the Synology NAS. So the Synology NAS will have the software to manage all the backups, but also it'll be the destination spot for all of your backups to be sitting directly on your Synology NAS. Let's now cross over to our computer, log into our Synology NAS, and then go through those steps. So logged in, uh, what I'm gonna do is first thing is gonna need to go and actually install some software onto the Synology NAS. And then what we'll do is we'll go and log in to my specific Windows server to actually configure some software onto them essentially an agent, so that the Windows Server has a connection and communication directly to my Synology NAS right here. So first things first is I'm gonna go into my little area here, I'm gonna go into my package center, and in here I'm gonna search for, and here it is, Active Backup for Business. Okay, you can see there's other versions available for Google, for Microsoft 365. We're gonna download the Active Backup for Business. Here it is, you can do backups of a lot of stuff. You can back up Windows servers, you can also back up virtualization environments as well, which is great. And then we're gonna select install. It's gonna go and download that. Of course, you're gonna need your Synology NAS to have access out to the internet to be able to actually download it. If your NAS does not have access and you don't want it to have access, you can actually do a manual install as well, where you can download the installer file and actually install it manually onto your Synology NAS. And the great thing about this is that you can centrally manage all types of backups within Active Backup for Business, not just your Windows servers, but if you've got other sorts of servers out there, if you've got a virtualization environment, you can manage all of these together, set up schedules, all of that directly from here, and then configure all of your restores to happen from the one single portal as well. Okay, so that's just finishing its installation, and then once it's finished, we'll go ahead and open it up and then go through the process. All right, so it's now running, great. So we can now close out of that. If we go back in, you'll actually now see it listed right there, active backup for business. And you've also got a portal available if you wanna use that, but we're just gonna be opening up active backup for business right here. You need to activate it, then log in with my Synology account, we're good to go. PC, physical server, file server, virtual server, virtual machine, etc. Some storage, you wanna go and create yourself a storage area if you want to as well. But this is essentially active backup for business, a space for you to now manage and set up all of your servers. You can see that it's listed by the different action sections here, protected devices, you can see a calendar of when specific jobs are gonna be taking place, storage status, ongoing activities, your logs, all of that. So you've really, you don't really need anything else. I mean, this does the whole trick for you, the whole job for you around managing all of your backups. So it really depends what sort of Windows servers you've got, of course. So if you are running, as I said, virtualization Windows servers, then yes, you can back them up directly using essentially the physical server location, but you can also get them ready on virtual server. So if you've got, for example, VMware, you're using vCenter, you've got a hypervisor, you can go manage hypervisor, you can add a hypervisor and actually connect directly into the hypervisor and then manage the full virtual machines directly from there. You can go and do that. And that is a separate section that we are not gonna be covering in this particular tutorial, but this allows you to connect directly into your hypervisor environment and then pick those VMs, which could include Windows Server VMs, and then you manage and back them up there. So we're gonna click on add device. 
some little overview. I'm going to click on OK. And this is how to add a Windows device to your list. So what you're going to need is you're going to need an agent to actually install on the Windows device. Okay, so select if you've got 32 or 64 bit. Most of the time you'll probably have 64 bit. So you actually go and select 64 bit right here. So we're going to go and download it, log in to a Windows server. And that installer that I just downloaded, you get it onto that Windows server and you install that agent. After you log in, task summary according to match templates will be displayed. Once confirmed, the backup task, the summary depicted will be created. And then we essentially have a connection between those two. So I've logged in here to our Windows server. Let's just move this a bit over. This is a Windows Server 2008. So it's a bit of an older one, but just showing you the concept that it will actually work on a 2008 model. It'll work on 2012, it'll work on 2016. It'll work all the way up to 2022 and the process is really similar. So on here, we're now gonna go and install that agent that we just downloaded. Here we got my agent. We go next, all the standard terms and conditions and install. Here we've got our VMware ESXi. So I've logged directly into a console and I've terminaled in or consoled in to a Windows Server 2022. And of course you can RDP, remote desktop connection into this box, or you can do it via a console in here. But very similar, showing you this is on a 2022. I've got my Synology Active Backup, my agent right here and select that and I'm going to install it onto here as well. So of course having the agent installed is going to ensure that Synology Active Backup for business can actually fully interrogate and control the backup status of the internals of that Windows Server and all of the data. So that is now done. I can now say finish and it's going to launch that application. Here's my 2008, very similar. I can say finish and that opens up. Now it's going to ask me for my server address. And of course my server address here being my Synology NAS. So I need to establish a connection. So IP address of your Synology NAS as well as the username and password that you want to use. So this could be your admin password or you may choose to set up a completely unique separate password for managing backups. That looks all good. Can now say okay. You notice that on the right up here, it now says that a device has been added. And under PC, you'll see that now DC Servo 1 has actually been added right into there. Let's go back to our virtual server. Here it is. And we'll do the same sort of thing and add this one into there as well. And there you can see, but now they're both listed. So all we've done is we've just essentially established a connection using the agent that we've installed on each of the two Windows server boxes, 2008 and 2022. Different versions will work just fine. And now we can actually go and create a task to start getting these two backed up. So now with this done, we now need to think about where do you want the backups to live? Where do you actually want the backups to be saved to? And of course, this being a Synology NAS, this is the perfect spot to actually have all of your backups backing up to because it's a storage device. So what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna go into our control panel on our Synology NAS, and uh, we're gonna go into the shared folder area and you see there's a number of folders right in here, but we're gonna create one that is specific to our server backups. You see I already have a backups folder, but that's fine, we won't use that one. We're gonna go and create a new shared folder. We're gonna call it server backups. These are my server backups. Next, we won't encrypt that one. Next and next. Okay, who do you want to have access to it? Well, we want definitely admin and my Emilio. We're gonna apply and that's now created right there, server backups. So in here, we can now select add device and now we're gonna actually go and, so in here, we now select create task. We're gonna give this a specific name. So this is the task name. What do you actually want this job to be called? This is the job where we're gonna select what servers we want to back up. So I'm just gonna be calling it Windows Server Backup. And of course, you're gonna create a number of different tasks in here, depending on what backups you want to take place, how often, and what servers you wanna be including in those backups. We're gonna back up the entire device, okay? We're not gonna do system volume and customize, we're gonna actually do all of it. Now, whether you want data transfer settings enabled or not, it's up to you. Do you want things to be compressed, shrink them down, or encryption, essentially scrambling it? You're gonna need a security key to actually go and do that. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, I recommend compression, definitely encryption, really up to you. If everything's inside of your network, you don't have to do this, but also if you want that extra level of security, then it is sometimes good to do encryption. For the purpose of this demo, we're not gonna do encryption. Computer power settings, we're not gonna enable these, 
because this is a production mimicking a production environment. So generally you don't want your server to be interrupted, to be shut down, to be woken up. You leave the settings as is. So we're not gonna do that one right there. Next, okay, where are the backups gonna go? Our backup destination here, of course, being our SVR backups, server backups. This is the new location that we just literally created. It's gonna be a dedicated space for all of our backups. So we're gonna select next right in there. Destination settings, compression encryption, just now confirming, do you want to compress? Yes, we do at the backup destination. Do you want encryption? If you do, you can put that in and then say passwords, confirm and confirm if you want to use that. The schedule. Do you want this to be a manual backup or do you want to be able to schedule the backup? So manual backup being, it only runs when you tell it to run. You click on the job and you can start the job every time you want it to. But generally, I recommend doing a scheduled backup. It is a regular backup. The data on those VMs or those physical Windows servers is going to change from time to time. So I recommend you go and do this and you can maybe make it run daily or on a weekend or specific days. So in our case, let's leave it as daily. We want it to run every single day, repeat hourly or daily, daily, and start at what time? So in this case, it's going to be 3 a.m., but of course you can change the time as you so want to. And generally you're gonna run backups outside of business hours as good practice because during business hours, you don't wanna be interrupting potentially people from working. Leave the rest as default and select next. Retention policy. So this is around how long do you want the data to be kept for? So enable retention policy to keep only the backup versions you want and free up storage without retention policy. So for example, if you don't set anything here, a backup will run. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, et cetera, et cetera. And the backups will never get deleted. So what's gonna happen, you're eventually going to run out of space. So it's generally good to tick on here. How many versions do you wanna keep? Do you wanna keep all versions for these many days? Do you wanna do advanced data retention policies, which you can go and set more rules, which are great. These rules are fantastic. So you can actually say, I wanna keep all versions for this many days, day, day backups, weekly backups, monthly backups, yearly backups, for how long? So for example, yearly backups, you may wanna keep these for seven years, which is quite good. A monthly backup, you only keep them for 12 months and then they get deleted. You don't need to keep a monthly backup more than that time. So these things are fantastic, I love them. So go and play around with this. I always recommend, especially if you're gonna be doing this in a business of some sort, going and playing around and setting some good retention policies would be great. If you're doing this in a home lab, in a small business, you may not want to get that specific. So you may just be able to say how many versions you want to keep. So for now, we'll just, we'll just say number of latest versions to keep is 10 versions and select next. A summary of what's going to take place and we're going to say done. So that is now ready to go. Of course, we haven't kicked it off. You see that the device that is going to be backing up is this one right here because that's the one that we selected, which is this one when we were creating the task. If you want to include both of them, Let's tick on both, I'm gonna create task. We'll leave it as task one. Server backups, compression, yep. Manual backup, let's leave it manual. Leave everything as is. It's now gonna include both of them right in here. And there's a second job for both of them listed. So with those jobs ready to go, literally all I can now do is click on this and I can say backup. That will actually start the backup job. You'll see that the status is now saying preparing for backup and that job is now actually being backed up. At the moment it says not backed up yet, but you'll notice that because of the task that's actually taking place, once that's done, that will update accordingly. We can do the same thing for the DC server if you so choose to back up that will kick it off and that job will also then commence at the same time. Of course, if it's in the schedule, it'll back up automatically at that specific schedule that you have set up. So first job is now done. You'll notice right there, you've got the WinServe backups right there. Last backup, successful, great. The second job is still running. We're at 11%. We go into devices. We'll now see that this particular server, 2022, has now said successful and there it is. Let's say a user now has, maybe it's a file server, users now deleted a file by accident or the server has become corrupted, you need to get that data back. Great, you've now got a backup that you can actually use to restore some of that data. So back inside of our active backup area, you can select on that server. We can now click on restore. You can do the entire device. You can also do file or folder. Of course, entire device being you're gonna restore the entire thing via recovery media. To restore the entire device, recovery media is required. Please download the tool below 
and then that will give you through the process on how to recover the entire entire server generally what i recommend for the entire server is if you're running in a virtual environment the vm section of this amazing tool you can actually manage the snapshots of the full vm and that is generally the best way to do it I recommend using this specifically for files and folders for the contents of that server itself. So I can actually go restore file or folder. It'll open up a new tab and here is some data. I can actually go into here and actually interrogate the files that are within this particular Windows server. So I can go in and actually see, well, maybe it's a user, it's the administrator user and here is the data for that administrator user, the desktops, the documents, the downloads, and then I can select whatever I want to select and actually restore it directly from there. So here we've got maybe Bing and Desktop Ini, those two files. You could download them directly onto your computer. Maybe have a look at what's in there first before you want to restore it. You can also click on Restore. If I click on Restore, the data you selected will be restored to the following destination. Are you sure you want to continue? So it's actually going to restore it directly into the same box. And you can see that I can actually select one of the other boxes if I want to as well, which is a great feature but generally you're gonna to wanna to restore it to the same spot and where do you wanna move it to? Do you wanna put it into the same spot because that will obviously override things or you can restore it to a different area on that Windows server. Restore path is here. Skip file restore when a file of the same name exists in this location. So do you want the file to be overwritten? If you're okay for it to be overwritten, you can say okay. If you do not want the file to be overwritten, then you can tick on that. But if we're happy with that, we're gonna say, okay. Another really nice thing about this console is that if you've got multiple copies, multiple versions, multiple days, for example, of backups, you've got a little area down the bottom here where you can actually go and pick the specific day that you wanna go back to. Because of course, what if the file deleted was deleted last week and you only found out about it a few days later? Well, you don't wanna restore from yesterday because that backup is not there. You want to go back to that day. So you can actually go back to that specific day and actually restore it directly from there. So there you have it done. Windows servers are now being backed up on your Synology NAS. Why don't you let us know down below in the comments if this yay worked or if it didn't work. But remember, as always, do click on that subscription button on the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future video releases. Thanks again for checking this video out. Hopefully it helped you out. We will see you next time.